Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the LGL officially unofficial cast. I am Alex, otherwise known as Lexi, I go by Mask on the internet. I am joined by the illustrious Hapgood brothers, initialized and Nymera. As always, as I say, please introduce yourselves. Oh, oh me. Oh, yeah, I'm Nymera, as always. Uh, Colorcaster for the LGL officially unofficial cast. Um, this is the last week of games. It's, it's getting hypey as heck. I was about to say another word there. I had to hold myself back. It's <laughs> really quite tense. Um, I'm really looking forward to the drama. Yeah. Near fines aside, I have to agree. Uh, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I have to, to get fined, we have to get paid. So <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, you would have also quite... been fined. Yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. I, either way. Where we're on some fairly intense games, like everything really, but first place feels like it's there to play for. I think Sengoku Gaming have locked, They've locked insane. Second. They've locked second. So, like, but there are so many other playoff spots that really are, are incredibly close. Like, I don't think anybody's completely out of contention yet. It's one of those things where everything is to play for. Everybody's still got their eyes on the prize. Mm. DFM feeling confident, maybe get to throw some fun games around. Sengoku Gaming breathing a sigh of relief after their wins yesterday but everybody else my days there's yeah. so much on the line yeah with that in mind let's have a very quick rundown it would be lovely to transition into a lovely little presentation but the graphics aren't my strong point so i will just so uh, try and visualize it for you dear viewers in in first place we have dfm on 11 wins and one loss in second place we have sengoku gaming in Eight with eight wins and four losses. In third place, and on their own at the moment, after a stellar run in week six, it's V3 Esports as a six and six. They're back to their neutral ways of always being one and one. They've done it so far. Balance, as it should be. As it should be. And, well, if they do it again, they are 100% on lock. In fourth place, and tied for four with three other teams, we've got Crest Gaming Act, Axis and Rascal Jester all sitting at five wins and seven losses. And to bring it up at the end, in tied fifth place, we have Burning Core and the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gamings sitting at four wins and eight losses. Now that sounds like a lot of losses and that you would almost discount them out, but that's only a one win different. If one of these teams can go on potentially a 2-0 streak, that'll push them up to that sixth spot where uh, into third place with V3. And when they're in, they're back in it with some upsets happening. It truly anything can go on here, as you both were saying. It, it does. It does sound pretty bad that kind of because technically I believe it's tied seventh, right? Because of the bottom two, and then the whole pack above them kind of go between the fourth to sixth, and kind sure. of have it equal, right? So it sounds a little bit worse. But like, I, I, I don't know how to balance this because it is only like a couple. There are only a couple of games in it, mm -hmm. but this is like. Two games left for each team. That close. That's still half of your games left to play, you know? There is a chance you make it in, but for you to make it up into the playoffs bracket now, the accepted teams, someone else has to come out. Yes. I don't know if these teams have got that got what it takes to nope. do that right now. No, the um, Hawks and Burning Core have been looking rather shaky. What about those mid-tier teams we're thinking of? Rascal Jackster, Axis, and Crest Gaming Act. Where where are we expecting them? Are they safe, do you think, either of you? Uh, Depends on the schedule. It's a little bit difficult to call. Can I call the Jesters out here? Mm. I think um, they have been one of those teams that have simultaneously seemed a little bit bad and sometimes a little bit brilliant. They have got so much experience on that roster, especially in high-tension games, that they have come on top, or come out on top, I suppose, is a better way of putting that, in a number of series. I just didn't expect it from them. Uh, I believe they got the win, sadly, when I wasn't casting over <laughs> Sengoku Gaming, in a kind of monstrous little series of plays um it's versus the uh, yeah. no it wasn't Sengoku no who is it versus it's um, Crest it would have been the, it would have been Crest Crest thank you very much sorry again I missed that game it's a bit of a shame um but uh, it's R Rascal Jester and Burning Court rather yes and and they they have got some brilliance in there but it's you know sometimes they also just look a little out of sorts when they draft themselves into holes so they can be quite a hard team to read I think they're probably going to make it in just off the fact that I think they'll deal with the tense situation a little better than other teams. I'm using that as a really good segue. Rascal Jester are going to be one of our first teams we're going to be seeing from today going into our first game of week seven. It's going to be Rascal Jester facing off against Sengoku Gaming. Following that, we're going to see Sengoku Gaming versus Burning Core. After that, we will have the Hawks facing off against Burning Core. And to, uh, and to round out our day, it's going to be Rascal Jester versus the Hawks again. Going into that first game, though, is it's going to be the important one to watch out for. Sengoku are sitting nice and pretty at 8 and 4, whereas Rascal Jester are sitting slightly precariously at 5 and 7. 
What do either of you think about this matchup? I think that Sengoku are on an absolute tear. Uh, they were on what five game, uh, like a five game win streak. About that five game, potentially six game. I really am like, not one hundred percent sure. I, yeah, I can't remember exactly. Probably should have written that down somewhere. But they're on a huge win streak. They've taken down DFM, um, Rascal Jester. While um, they've kind of looked a bit back and forth. I mean, they ended up taking a win versus um, uh, CGA, I believe. Yep. Um, they... In that huge upset game where Adia was uh, Blitzcrank, ultimated, silenced, oh, yeah. and uh, that, was the... that was the game. Oh, yeah, no, so, and, oh yeah. Adia was in such a position to carry that. Well, that, that was kind of like a win from behind. But those are... It's going to be a weird analogy. It kind of reminds me of... Um... If for those of you who are into Premier League football, it reminds me of, of Fergie's Manchester United, right? Being able to win kind of just completely against the run of play sometime in injury time. Yeah. That, that's the game to watch if you want to kind of see that kind of play. It's like somehow it's one team fight turns it around, gets them the win, and the win is what matters, yes. especially at this point in the season, right? So maybe they'll be able to do the same thing versus Sengoku, but Sengoku have not been ones to fumble on the, uh, on the, on the end of the game nowadays. No, they haven't. And while Sengoku have um, fallen into, let's call it the origin mindset, where you hit, you don't necessarily close your games out fast, but you do clean them out in that kind of orderly fashion, all those boxes ticked, uh, there is room potentially in those late game scenarios for something to go a little bit wrong. So maybe if Jess can pull out another one of those team fights, they can pull a win out. But I do give the advantage to Sengoku Gaming, who have looked very controlled, actually. And off the back of Pyrian really stepping up for me in the middle, looking across the team. so Confidence good. Across the team. Blank having some much better early games, some high impact. Just good stuff across the board for me on, the, on those guys as well. And I want to highlight a specific lane, as I always do like to, where I believe uh, potentially it might be one through. And I'd love to get your thoughts on this before we do go into the game. And I think it's that bot game. Yutori Muashi has really been playing just out of his mind over the last few of these Sengoku games. Not dying in multiple times. Or if they're getting caught out, it's basically negligible. And the team's already won the full team fight with his support of NT facing off against... Well, one of the favorite bot lanes that we were really going in with, with that Art Vivid combo. What's your thoughts on this? Okay, so if we look at the 280 carries in particular, um, they're very similar in terms of the goal per minute. They do get a lot of resources for the team. Mm -hmm. um, they, are ten they tend to be the guys which soak up a lot of the mid lane farm when stuff starts coming, when push starts coming to shove. And the other thing is that Yutori Miyashi is the highest kill participation ADC in the league. Mm -hmm. He's set at 78.5. 5% oh. kill participation. Just looking at that stat so, now, yes it is. Obviously, like, kill participation is a little bit strange to kind of think through and you don't want to do things just through stats, but True. what that normally tends to mean is that a team likes to play through team fights, play around a group to ADK when they're pushing, <laughs> sieging, and around objectives. And Sengoku having their win streak have been working pretty well at this. I mean, I have to kind of add in onto that as well that, like, this is also just in terms of a bit of a narrative point of view, this is art vivid it's yutori mayashi these kind of ridiculously storied players of the ljl this is a, a classic matchup and these players have been fighting against each other and playing against each other for all the marbles for years and years i mean last summer it was the semi-final matchup with art versus yutori mayashi in a massively back and forth series these guys know each other inside and out there is a lot of history there and i think this matchup should if both teams come out to play be a real Barnstormer, I expect a lot of uh, passion and ability coming out of that bot lane. Okay, and well, with that all said, I think it's about time that we actually get into this first game for week seven over at the, the LJL. Let me count you in for three, two, one. Good luck to both these teams. Thank you again, Mass Swine. And of course, we're into the first game of week seven, the last week of the LJL. It's Sengoku Gaming on the blue side, and they have Appermen in the top lane, Blank in the jungle, Pyrian in mid lane, and then Yutori Mayashi and Enti as their bot lane. And sat at five and seven, middle of the pack on the red side, it's Rascal Jesters in the top lane, it's Cog Cog in the jungle, jungle Hatchimecha, mid lane Ninja, bot lane Art, and his support Vivid. 
Yeah, and we've seen some bans come out. It's not a complete surprise to me to see Jarvan and Yumi taken away by Sengoku Gaming. And Pyrian's LeBlanc and just now the Senna will be taken off the board. Okay, so we've talked about Pyrian being more confident, going back to his winning ways. A lot of that has come from the LeBlanc. And actually, Yutori Miyashi going back to the Senna as well on the kind of the artillery ADC, being able to scale up into that huge range down in the bot lane uh, has been taken away. And I think that's a good ban myself. Yeah, and I, I have to echo that. I think the LeBlanc ban is that. so there's, sensitive. There's, there's no echo. Ban. There's no echo yet. That's true. We, not have, we don't have Arya in this game. He <laughs> does play a mean echo. But maybe we'll catch that later on today at some point. Either way, Aphelios is the last ban for Senkoku Gaming. And we'll see what Rascal Jesters do. Uh, I, I am glad that Rascal Jester notes how good Pyrian is in that LeBlanc. He has won over games yeah, that they just should never have won due to Pyrian playing that so he's, sensibly. He's almost single-handedly won two or three games yeah. in the last couple of weeks with that pick. It's the Orn as the last ban. I was going to call that out as the last kind of first pickable kind of champion. Elise is actually the first pick. It is. It on. Well, it, it, it is and it also isn't because Blankus looked really good on that champion. And yeah. he has run over a couple lanes. Like, the last couple times he's got it, he looked very good on it. I'm aware he does index you into getting something done in the early game, but Blank currently seems to have managed to get that done. The response, though, is a set. Uh, very powerful. I think over in the LCS, it's got a 75-plus percent win rate. Oof, like, yeah. this champion for all its counters has looked pretty successful around the globe. And it allows top laners to uh, live out their fantasy of beating up their opponent with their bare fists. Um, we've seen Evie just kind of walk up at level 1 and face break people into submission. It's the Rex style locked in alongside it. That is a very strong early power combo there in the top lane going towards the mid lane as well. Well, yeah, I imagine Elise and whatever top lane Appermen picking up versus Cog Cog and this Rex eye could be quite a pow could be quite an entertaining 2v2 yeah. if it so turns up. You told me I actually thinking about an Ezreal. Has it pretty is... good on this champion? I'm a fan. And it's a shared champion as well. This is a takeaway from Rascal Jester as well. Art has also looked very confident on the Ezreal pick as well. Does scale well into the late game nowadays in the current meta with um, Lethal Tempo slash Conqueror being picked up. Nah, locked in for top lane. That's I'm what you're fan. talking about. I locked am. in alongside the Elise. Yeah, and the last time we saw Appleman lock this in, he went Black Cleaver, Frozen Mallet, GA. He was looking for that split push build. Still pulled off some nice team fights, but with that kind of advantage, you can definitely look to get some ganks in that top side. I don't call it a split push build unless you play the Ring Raid. Uh, play, okay. play the Ring King and Raid. Okay, play. I see what it is. There's the split pushing and then the sort of death split do pushing. Remember, do you remember Wicked building? Yes, I do. Uh, well, more specifically, do you remember Wicked building Rage Blade Runa's Hurricane on 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 now? Oh, just about. Good grief, that's a long. Mm. That's a throwback to Elements. That might have been Elements. Yeah. Wow. Season, season, season five. Dark wow. Days. Right. We've got so much other things to talk about. <laughs> Ninja's fair. locked in the Varus. Ninja has played this mid lane. <clears throat> remember that he has played that poke lethality Varus mid. Could still be that. It could be. Um, it does work pretty well. Um, as a poke champion, as we're saying, poke champions tend to be quite good in the LGL because they like to play around so many dragons and uh, we've seen many a game ended around such objectives, meaning that poke does become more valuable. So we're talking of poke champions, the, um, we've got more bans coming in. It's the Zoe taking away that other poke champion away from Perry, it's the other real blind pickable mid laner, and, and uh, so is Nocturne. That's yeah. been banned. It's slightly bizarre to me, but Nocturne has become it's edge a It is a priority yeah. ban over in the LJL at the minute. We've seen so much of it mid, and it looked really good. I think it is at 100% win rate. It's 3-0 right now in the LJL, the split. That's pretty insane, and... Uh, We've seen a Ziggs last ban. Uh, Seros, alongside Ninja, have kind of proving this champion definitely has its worth. As uh, particularly when well, Ninja also with... plays that. Ninja exactly. Plays that champion. And I, exactly. It's the reason I would bring that one up as well. Also, the Rift Herald combo with the Satchel is so ridiculously powerful. Mm. Nautilus is the pick though for Rascal Jesters. Sengoku Gaming thinking about a Braum in response. I think that's fine because you don't have a tank jungler. Braum offers you a little bit more of that grouped tank. Nar doesn't always want to group you, as you were saying earlier. Kind of likes to split push. And with the Glacial Fissure, allows you a little bit of a disengage, which isn't really on the cards for the Ezreal and the Elise in terms of uh, peeling for other people, right? Yeah. And especially if this Elise is going to be looking to focus down on Nar, having an Ezreal Braum as a bot lane is such a good oh, it's, it's, pick. It's you just the, can't. It is the safe bot lane. Yeah, trying to dive Ezreal, that yeah. duo is a nightmare. Yeah, it used to be Ezreal Tom Kench, then Tom Kench kind of stopped having laning presence, so Braum kind of ended up propping up Ezreal a little bit more in the laning phase than that. And, you know, it's the tank plus Ooh. Ezreal. It's the Pantheon last lock-in that will be going towards mid lane. That's, oh, man. That is a very different pick from Pyrian. Elise Pantheon, Elise Nah. That is a powerful yeah. top side of the map. I can see why the Ezreal Braum is locked in now because Elise will never be down there. <laughs> 
I'm starting to feel a little bit sad for Cog Cog because if there's a uh, a Grand Star fall into the the mixed damage of Elise and Nar, he's uh he's gonna be having a pretty hard time. Cannon. Oh my days! There could be a cannon top. I think it's it gonna be, be set mid. It could be set mid. Cannon. Cannon. Um. Top. Varus. I was thinking like it could be Cannon ADC. Uh, oh, we have seen that like, before. Could, yeah. it, 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 it's been nerfed many a time. That is a very different pick, and what this does mean is that if he goes towards an early Zonyas and is post six, much harder to dive. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The question is, Elise is pretty good pre six diving, so I suspect Kenan may have to be a little wary before he does pick up that level six. Uh, before the commencing stopwatch becomes an active stopwatch about whether or not he can uh, survive those dives. But, talk me through some of these win conditions. We've got some pretty different drafts here and a couple interesting curveballs. Where are you seeing win conditions? Who are you expecting uh, to come out on top in this game so far? So Sengoku, dive them. Yep, Rascal Jester, survive the dive. I think that's the first part. It's a multi-step win condition for Rascal Jester particularly, right? Because if they do end up dying to the early pressure and then getting snowballed on, very hard to deny the likes of Pantheon alongside the long-range follow-up AD carry of Ezreal alongside the Elise who has good damage on snowballs as well, and the Nar. There's just a lot of range in follow-up if the first CC lands. But then on the other side, you have great counter-engage from the Showstopper alongside the Haymaker and then also the Slicing Maelstrom as well. So if Rascal managed to pull off the big turnaround after the first CC has been used from Sengoku, maybe they can start turning a fight. They do have pretty good mixed damage across the board with um, the virus having a little bit of on-hit AP as well, and then the cannon there. Yeah, and there is a lot of CC from Rascal Jesters. Every one of the champions is bringing some form of hard CC. Slicing Maelstrom, Knockup from Rek'Sai, Showstopper, Phase Breaker, you're looking at Corrupting. Uh, Chains of Corruption. Chains of Corruption, yeah. You're looking at Nautilus and all of his joyous Joyous CC as we come into our first game of week seven. Five man stack in this bot lane bush. They are looking to find somebody but, 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 somewhere they shouldn't but, but, be. That's not what I thought of something more important. Go on. I don't need to talk about no, that. No, no, tell me. Hey, so, Corrupting Potion, Chains of Corruption. Is, yeah. is there any relation? Is they've this, bottled it, up. They've bottled up Varasol. Oh. So, well, so maybe it's... It's actually so, so, just dark in distillation. Maybe, maybe it's when, from all of those season three Varasols that missed... Maybe they've just like found all of them lying on the floor. It's like, hey, do you think look, looks like, as as most of humanity does at long points of time? Um, maybe we can drink this. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe all the exactly. salts that I've missed. That's it. Let's bottle that and sell it. That sounds like a good maybe commercial that, do venture. You, do you think? Do you think Baker Pantheon and the and the Darkin have like a little bit of a of a kind of An business underground deal? A business fermenting? deal going because you got you got like they're making Varasalt moonshine. Exactly. We've we've got like a food and drink combination here. They need to start up a pub. This could be great. Talk to Gragas, man. This could be amazing. That, that sounds mildly hard. I think we've All uncovered right. a great scandal. We have, but we need to talk about that invade, which got found out. It's just wards down in pretty much every, both sides of the jungle. Rex size yeah. starting on that top side. The Gnar fake leash is going to be spotted out. However, yeah. Elise starts um, on the opposing blue buff, but it means we're probably going to see some vertical jungling. Vertical jungling with Rexai on the top side. We'll see if it's going to be a red to blue on the top side of Hatch Metro. He is definitely pathing that way. What this means is that Aphamen on the Gnar will be playing on the weak side of the map. That's not normally where you want to be with the Elise being on your team because Elise does like to dive but that side of the map. But, you know, having the Ezreal scale up earlier and then putting some pressure onto Art and Vivid, Art being one of the primary carries of this team is pretty good for Sengoku regardless, just because of the team, the, the team identities, right? Yeah. And it's not just vertical jungling, it's vertical jungling where all parties know what's going on. There was pings on both junglers, there were wards on both buffs, everyone knows what's going on. Ooh, ooh, Tyrion is looking to try and find Hatchimetcha here, but it is just slightly too late. To... does spot that with the tremor sensor. I, I was about Rexang. to say, when you do vertical jungling, junglers have to be very, very careful. Um, it's in the early game particularly, and speaking of the early game, it's a Halo Blades Rex, so it does give you a little bit more pressure in the early auto attack rates. Because this set and Pantheon have very early CC, which is, you know, very hard to deal with, um, you can have uh, a lot of these mid laners kind of, oh, as you can see, it's just, I mean, just they're wailing back and forth. Mm -hmm. These mid laners can walk up into a jungle confrontation and swing it on the turn of a dime. Really. Yeah, uh, massive. Just turn on dime, and it means that these jungles need to be so careful when these mid laners are out of lane. Yeah, speaking of turning on a dime, we saw Elise actually go back into the blue Ooh, side and finish up the invade. That is Sengoku Gaming coming up with a massive fan vote. They have really improved in those over the split as they've kind of proved that some of their all-star LCK import talent 
has got what it takes to pull um, it together later on in this split. The, the fans are sending their energy. They're charging the Sengoku Spirit Bomb. Obviously, this will come out in the finals. It's going to be a 50-50 fan vote. And then, you know, we're going to see some fireworks. Oh, violence. Hachimecha is about to walk into uh, Pyrian. But I think just... Pyrian, having missed that Comet Spear, yes, may regret no that. Oh, yeah, okay. He's going to throw back a co another okay. Comet Spear. Because, okay. of course, the Ooh. tap means that you get the half the cooldown back. But that doesn't mean that Ninja can avoid the cocoon. <gasps> it takes a big Comet, Comet spear. spear at the end of that one as well. Mm. So th this is the thing, right? These mid laners both both know that they can start interfering with the junglers who are trying to um, get a hold of the map early on and try and put some pressure on the sidelines. But it's the mid lane which is really taking up a lot of the attention right now because they're saying, hey, I mean, we're here, we have CC, we have early damage, so don't ignore us, junglers. Yeah, and actually we saw Elise has managed to pick up both scuttle crabs, mm. which is pretty huge. So actually she went for a reinvade, cleared out Hachimecha's blue side. Hachimecha didn't do the same. Uh, and Blank's just about to clear out his own blue side now is quite a way up in terms of camps available to him. I, I was about to say that, right? So it took off the two scuttles, didn't lose anything on his side of the map. Um, while he was doing that, means that the camps are still up. He's going to recall, get the chilling smite, and then also a couple of extra bits and bobs alongside it, and still have camps to go back to. That's going to be a big advantage in terms of XP and gold for Blank in the jungle. Yeah, it is. Uh... Cog Cog, while Apperman is stuck in his Meganar form, throwing some of those shurikens out to win a bit of a health trade, but it is also Meganar, does get to be fairly tanky, at least in terms of health totals. Uh, the only lane pushing in right now for the side of uh, Rascal Jesters, as I was about to say that, is the bot lane, but I just saw uh, Set in the mid lane doing the, exactly the return. Yeah, but it's a little bit different. It's, it's a little bit difficult when you know that the um, the, the Pantheon and the Elise are kind of All going right. off the map. We have we got a gang. Oh, what a good dodge away. It's not, he's going to flash out as well. Ooh. That was a clutch hop. Blanks actually here has got human form available and the cocoon is going to back away. Big wave there might have been a risk to go into. So Kogog was looking for the flash forward on the, the lightning rush there, would have applied one of the marks to the storm. Then if he gets the empowered auto into a Q, would have landed a stun, and that would have been followed by Rek'Sai. The CC lock didn't land though, the flash was just short. Caught Apple and flashes away. The face breaker lands. Stun. That means that Hatcher Magic yeah. is going to get underneath. It's a decent Aegis assault. Oh, but it's no! Not enough because that Haymaker was monstrous. Came through with the true damage for the first blood. It did indeed. And there was no flash away from Pyrian. Means that he does go down for first blood against the boss in the mid lane. Ninja showing up pretty big there. But a little bit of hubris from Pyrian there, choosing not to flash away. Cockcock once again rushing forward in this top lane. Has got level six as well, so yeah. has he hit that one first? See, that's the problem. Set has always wanted to be a fighter. It's his passion. <laughs> Pantheon wanted to be a baker. This is the issue, man. You've got to commit to the life. And so, so uh, this saying, time around, so you're saying it's 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 what's inside that camp. It is. Oh, what a truly anime story. Well, I it can is. get behind that. I, I mean, like, that is a pretty anime match for the mid lane. Could it, you it, get it, much it oh, more JoJo? It is, in fact, I think they did that in Set's champion teaser. It's just literally the, the whole, oh, so you're approaching me. And Ninja just kind of... You know, I mean, that champion just... teaser was... Uh, oh, it's... Like, filthy anime trash is used oh, as a good no, arcade shift away. Use... Vivid has to flash away because Blank is here. Mm. Doesn't turn around too much and actually enters a little late with that door because that piercing arrow hit like a truck. Uh, might have been the W there, actually. I'm not sure exactly what if it was or not. You know, the, part, the, the particle for Varus um, W active. It's I, so I, awful it's to see. So, so awful to see. I, I, I've just never managed to get around it, which is probably why I died to him so much. I, I only recently realized how long the, act, the W active like cooldown is. 40 seconds? 40 50, seconds. 50. It's huge yeah. early on. I don't think it doesn't get that much better either. It's a massive one. So for I, uh, I, have, I have a friend who plays AP Varus mid, oh, uh, which is W max, um, and then like you tap him just like you wait for someone else to do something you see someone at half page i'm like that's a free kill yep so. and who that, that sounds just really disgusting i dis does. dislike that person immensely mm. i don't think i know them uh you do unfortunately oh do okay. also play ap Shinzo. uh a... no okay is this the person who also plays ap lucian or used to uh there are a great many things which can be built ap <laughs> Uh, actually, speaking of AP, Ooh, there joke. really aren't that many Magic Jam Damage Champions um, here on the Rift. We have the Cannon, we have the Elise, but you know, that's, that's, about, that's it. about it. Really, it is. is. And uh, that does mean that we'll be seeing a fair amount of armor stacking. It also means I think we're probably going to see quite a lot uh, of... Uh, actually, I'll take that point back because we're about to see an engage in the bot side because the hook came through. But NT is Braum. And Braum <laughs> is remarkably hard to tank when he has still got his door available. Yeah, he is. You know, just the unbreakable means that you don't take any damage, really. You know, yeah. the door goes up uh, and the way is shut. It is kept by those who are frozen and the frozen keep it. All right, let's have a look at what's going on. Herald will be spawning very shortly. Are we going to see the rotation up top, do you think? I'm aware the bot lanes 
uh, while you're talking about she does have teleport, hasn't burned it yet, do you expect that early rotation up there from the side of so it either is, bomb? Yeah, it, it's, it's eight minutes in. We don't see any resets just yet. Even though the Herald is up, we see both junglers there, so we could see a, um, a 3v3 before the bot lanes even get there. And we oh, see Ackerman's gone in, in but so Hatchimetch is still here. That's a oh, big no. chunk onto Cog Cog, but there's a slicing maelstrom. Ackerman's in trouble, but look, Pyrian's here, going to try and turn oh, this around. Man. He's not going to get oh, it, but no. that's a big knockup. Oh, Sengoku Gaming. The, the Cocoon misses as well. Oh, nightmare. They thought they had the collapse, and actually it was completely the other way around. Yeah, so there are a lot of things used there at the end of the day for Sengoku and Rascal Jester at the end of it. Slicing Maelstrom used, although there aren't too many flashes uh, used on their side as well. I mean, obviously having the Rek'Sai flash available is still pretty nice on the side of the Jesters. But, you know, it is the, the kill going the way of them. They're still very happy with that. It is, and we're going to see Rift Herald started up by blank, though, because it did at least force the backs from how low people were, but Hatchimetra's still around. That Prey Seeker not landing is going to tell Hatchimetra that something is going on. Oh, Double teleports, in. but Ninja's here. Apperman is here. here. We're going to see quite There's a no lot. Varus. There is no Varus. Varus doesn't have TP. He's stuck in the bottom. That means it's going to be... 5v4 okay. if it does come through to it, it means that Sangoku Gaming will get this without the contest. Rascal Jester probably wisely backing away. Either I, way, I agree. I agree. it um, means that early objective lead going towards Sangoku Gaming, even if it is a two kill lead so far to Rascal Jester with a couple clutch ganks. It is. So now the Herald goes over to Sangoku. You see where they want to place that. It normally does go down to one of these sidelines because when you put it in the mid lane, you don't tend to be able to take down the full turret. It does tend to, The rest of the team tends to rally around their structure before it goes down. But what that means is it is a little bit of gold in the bank. While they were doing this, of course, Art managed to push in a wave in the bot lane. Aphromen just going down to collect the wave now. But now, uh, yeah, so Art now just coming out with a bilge water as well. Yeah, either way, let's just check in on some of those sort of items as well. You're right, the bilge water is out. But it's uh, Sheen and Tyrion for Ezreal. He's kind of scaling up quite nicely. Is that 10 CS over Art at the minute? Uh, even with that roam, but that's the power of teleport. It, it, and it's, it's the power of teleport, it's also the power of Ezreal just never being able to be denied CS. Yeah. Just, oh, it was Mystic Shot. <laughs> it is just pretty disgusting. And we did see that one gank that forced a flash out of Vivid earlier on, also just taking away a little lane pressure. Y you know you, you know what I wonder? Because yeah, Cle yeah. Klepto's been removed from Ezreal. It has. Right? Um, I wonder if Ezreal's CS numbers have gone up because people aren't using, using it for the, the people. Stack. That's a good and so it's like If you have a choice between poking someone and getting one CS and like, I got but, free items. But I could get a money. I could get a sack of gold. Like, th there's something to that. There might be something to look into there. Ooh, yeah, there it really is. Uh, Pyrrhus <laughs> took the worst end of that trade actually with Ninja. Uh, Ninja is getting to a point now. He's fairly tanky, especially with oh, that Ninja type of that. The slicing mails from the bottom. Apperman now in trouble. He's a little oh. ways off the the rage, and Hachimet just oh, desperately got it. He's got the ultimate come through for an execute. Well played by the side of Rascal Jesters. Now up 3-0. and uh, Apermen dying for the second time now. Yep. So this is the problem with playing Nara on the weak side uh, against a strong Wait, But we see the Grand Star fall oh, come in. It's teleport. a teleport from Set. He is going to come down that, but that means a teleport form. But actually, Pyrrhon's now going to get turned around onto by Hachimet, who's waiting out this Aegis assault. Uh. Goes down. Well collapsed by Rascal Jester. Sangoku Gaming thought they had a great mm. turnaround, and it really wasn't. And uh, it turns out for two free kills and a Drake over to Rascal Jester. What a turn of play. Second kill over to Ninja as well on the set. He's going towards the Black Clearer, looks like, first item. So not going to go for the full damage Trinity Force build. Rather, that kind of the uh, the secondary off tank alongside the Rex side um, in the jungle. It's the second kill against Pyrrhon as well. He's suffered on this early game champion. You know what I was saying about, oh, Sengoku, they want to start diving. And Rascal Jester wants to, you know, survive the dive. Um, they survived that dive admirably. More so, they, they, they turn it around. They get a massive advantage out of that. They really, really did. There's a two-level advantage for Ninja right now as well. This Pantheon, which was supposed to be snowballing, currently is very much opposite of that. Um, and Nah, yeah, he'll scale just fine. But the minute this... Kennen that maybe could have had a weaker early phase if he'd been dived is 102 has a proto belt complete looking more than ready for any of these team fights and Kennen slicing maelstrom so much more reliable than the mega nars nah absolutely yeah because you can see his ultimate cooldown pretty much on the little red bar underneath his hp right uh it it, it will mean that sangaku are gonna have to start playing from behind now we see actually the all and the wallop committed by that it's the red slice and maelstrom again Apperman is a level down he's here. actually thinking like he's gonna have to lose this i don't think he's got hop up he's got flash he might have to burn it oh, it's not no. gonna matter cog cog with the 1v1 kill the Apperman started he chose that fight and uh very much regrets that you have to think 
that's the third death for the top lane. Solar lane's really falling behind now for Sengoku. But on the other side, great news for Rascal Jester. We said that they are set up five and seven. They want to be picking up wins to secure themselves a playoff spot. One win will go a long way into doing that. I don't think a single win will um, confirm them into playoffs, but it goes a long way. Sengoku Gaming will drop the Rift Herald at least, but it's a long way behind, are they? Now they're 3k oh, goal behind in 30 minutes. It is the old committed, but the door goes up, and I think we're seeing There's a death no charge onto you. Yeah, he has no mana. This might mean things can't get turned around so easy. He's going to at least try and get the stun force up back. Uh, but that Rift Herald, isn't it? It's only just getting a charge. charge. It's finally going to get one in. Go. They do get the gold. All of it goes to blank, though. Yeah, that's a bit All of a shame. All of it goes to blank. <laughs> Pyrian so, could really have used that. There was going to be, you know, the, the welfare support for Pyrian on this, uh, down on his luck. Pantheon doesn't end up going over to him, though. Still sat um, at, zero, at zero kill participation at 14 minutes into this game. Hasn't mm -hmm. delivered his first item yet. Uh, not feeling so good on the Pantheon. Is it zero kill participation or 100%? Because Sengoku Gaming have got no kills well, to participate in. I'm, I'm, I mean, you could say zero or just net zero. Zero percent or... or uh, sure, whatever. I mean, <laughs> it, it, either way, it's looking pretty bad for Korean right it now. Is. So I think the way that Sengoku wants to play out this game is need to wait until two items on Ezreal and then you start trying to fight. Yep. I don't think you can genuinely fight before that. At least it's not like Rascal Jester have a super tank, so if they do mess up a couple of plays, Ezreal will still be able to do very good damage against the entire team. So, well, that's what we're waiting for. Sangoku will uh, want to go back to that uh, tried and tested, let's scale a little bit, and then start thinking about fighting. Yeah, uh, but until that point, Rascal Jester are very content with this early game. They have got that 3k gold lead. They've got uh, on the board with one of the Drakes, stopping that stacking from Sangoku Gaming. They've got a set that is up in levels, is pretty tanky. He's completed the Black Cleaver. He's got his Ninja Tubbies. We've got a Cannon. Uh, he's so Pyrian. strong. And they found oh, Period again. Blank is no. He's got a flash out, but the Execute is there from Rek'Sai. Now Blank is in a bit of a tricky spot as Rascal Jester's Vivid tries to run down the Spider, but they will at least steal away the blue buff that was attempting to be handed over to the Pantheon. Oh, that's really sad. This is uh, the Pantheon experiment is not working for Sengoku right now. You know this is a uh, this is unfortunately not the first time we've seen a Pantheon do pretty poorly in this split of LGL. We also saw it as Pantheon support from um, CGA when they played against I think it was Burning Core. Maybe. Yeah, it was the Grandal um, experiment on the Pantheon support. It didn't yeah, look so it, good. It, yeah, was, we, I, I don't know if we've seen a particularly impressive Pantheon so far this split of LGL. We saw a couple from the last split, but a very different kind of beast nowadays. Not the 100% uh, pick and ban presence. Um, Really now, it just accentuates the point that the only hope is, is Ezreal right yeah. now. Um, he's running the Conqueror. does mean he does a bit more damage towards the tank here. Uh, members of Rascal Jesters, which will be the Nautilus and uh, the Rek'Sai. But on the other side, you know, you've got a Blade of the Rune King built up an art. He's not going to be doing no damage either, right? Nope. Uh, and the, the solo laners for Sengoku Gaming are kind of half champions. Oh, at this point. Flashing. Blank gets flashed on. Vivid claims that one just well spotted that's the problem with infernal map there is so much less hidden space to be invading in blank had no choice there gets caught out on his invade desperate to try and turn around the blue buff steal from earlier yep indeed and now he's uh he's down as his first death of the game it is only the first one but every death like this puts the clock puts the clock a little bit uh closer to a ultimately lost game right this is going towards a doomsday situation for them they are against a you know a team fight comp which will be able to group up and fight when they want because they will have the run of the map and that death meant the blank wasn't on the table wasn't on the riff for when this first infernal drake spawned it means it's going to be free for rascal jesters uh, and they are going to start stacking up towards that infernal soul win condition Will do indeed. At least they got, got themselves the first cloud drag, so it's not up onto Soul Point already. That is um, a bit scary. It's a, a bit scary. gold gold leads across the board. It's a thousand plus for both solo laners. Yeah, there's a, there's a thousand gold difference in the jungle too. Luckily, it's only on a Rek'Sai, um, which means that Rek'Sai does kind of fall off. But when you get to a Black Cleaver, you know you're still doing damage, right? Have Hail of Blades, which means your initial burst is very strong. Um, if you get on, if if Hashimacha gets on top of you, Tony Miyashi, he does solo him out. He genuinely does. Oh, that cocoon just missed. Cool. We'll call that a clutch sidestep. I don't know whether that was intended, <laughs> but uh, either way, it does miss means that Rek'Sai doesn't does get out. Uh, and it's also just like there is a thing with the Rek'Sai that actually there are a number of targets that if you can get a late game ultimate off on an Ezreal who's already 
arcane shift where you can still kill him. So if you just wait on it, you can still be useful. It's just harder to be doing stuff. As the second Rift Herald, now summoned by Rascal Jester, going to try and break down this oh, mid lane tier so one. They could actually lose two turrets here. Wow, yeah, there's not all that much wave clear for the side of Sengoku Gaming looking over their roster. And that means that getting onto this Rift Herald could be a nightmare. They're going yeah, to at least get hitting. half. Yeah, yeah, go. Got half to two thirds of that turret. Uh, Health bar. Oh, oh boy, Abamens in a tricky run. spot, gets tagged by the Shuriken. Cog Cog is here, he's got all his abilities, hasn't even burned the ultimate yet. Abamens still exhausted, can't even think about oh. an ultimate here. It's just going to be another 1v1 <laughs> kill. Rek'Sai gets uh, nominal kill assist with a Prey Seeker. This and is this is the duality of Afferman. <laughs> oh no, oh, no. the old man's on well. They didn't even know he was on a flipping control war. Blank's was... gonna feel so miserable it's... about that. You, you, you know, you, we used to re we used to call that kind of recall the OGN recall. You remember back in season yep. four when people just like randomly die from backing in a stupid position. Yeah, that's the classic there from Blank going down for his second death of the game. I think you told me actually an NT. Like this is the kind of game where like you don't press it, and obviously it's a custom game as well, so I'm not talking around, but. If it was a Celtic game, you at least hover over the report button. You know you're pre-made with them. <laughs> you know you're pre-made and you're like, this might lose me some, you know, friends in the future. Be like, is this, is, does this count as insane? Does this genuinely count as insane? <laughs> the game is really falling away from Zangoku now. They're what, 7,000 gold, but in the um, in the deficit at 19 and a half yeah. minutes. We in. are at, we are at mutual state. <laughs> this is, yeah. I, I think we, I think maybe it would have been a little bit earlier after like um, <laughs> Blanca's like report mid. I mean, like, <laughs> like, he's literally sitting on a control ward. He, like, he, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Um, I want to say that was probably placed down before the Chains of Corruption came out. Either it, way. It was, it was. Yeah, no, he was he was recalling on a ward. Um, maybe just trying to get a quick reset off. Didn't know where the rest of the members of the team were. Uh, it does get caught out. Uh, oh. so, but, I mean, I, to kind of put things in a bit brighter light, uh, Sengoku at least still have. I, I think, I think they, so, um... If they go 0 2, I think they can tie for. Uh, they, I think they tie up V3 on. If V3 go 2 0 and Sangoku go 0 and 2, Sangoku still have the head to head against them, so I think they are locked for second. Okay. I think that's how it works. Um, well, that kind so of explains they, uh, why they are running this quite different composition uh, well, than that we have seen before. I don't really condone like coming into playoffs with going 0 2 if they're going to try and hide their strats and stuff oh, like that. Oh, Cocoon, 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 Cocoon though. Ninja. Yeah, and Pin, Pyrian's going to get showstopping oh, through the stun. Well played by Ninja. Oh, it's leading to nothing. Okay, alright. Well, um, so, um, what this does mean though, on the other side, because, you know, we don't want to jet, there is no caster bias here. We, we're casting from the other side. Rascal Jester, they are currently... On co they would be they are one dragon off of a perfect game. This is huge against the second place team in the league right now. If they have to close this game out and come out with a win, it is huge for the prospects going into the playoffs. They'll have to be in there, kind of saying, "Well, I mean, we can take down the big teams. Maybe we can get through to semifinals. Maybe we can get through to finals." Yeah, and of course, this is kind of like if you look back to way back to week one. Of course, it was. Sengoku Gaming, they came out on top of Rascal Jester with their Kiana and the Carpets of Doom oh, combo. Was... From way back when, Enti on the support rumble, we saw Yutoro Miyashi on the center. It was, uh, you know, like, blank on a great Kiana game. But this time around, Sengoku Gaming significantly far behind. It's 21 minutes and 8k is the deficit right now. It just keeps growing. Uh, this is like the this is like the banking crisis. It's, uh, it's getting worse. It ain't getting better. And there's no one really to bail Sengoku out right now. You know, Yutori Miyashi even had to go for an Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah. He, we see Ezreal almost exclusively go for the Triforce nowadays, but he feels like uh, you need the cheaper item right now. Get to your two-item carry. Maybe try and peel a little bit more with the slow field coming through. So now, but it's no, it's still not a lost game because there's no soul claim. There's no dragon claim. That's what I wanted to so, ask. So maybe Where? there's an objective steal somewhere right. down the line. So, so is maybe. That, is, so to run with that banking crisis analogy a little further, let's go back <laughs> to, to let's go to 1929. Let's talk about what mattress are you hiding your money in to sort of survive the banking crisis? What is Sengoku Gaming's mattress? Is it the objective steal? Where are they banking in? Where uh, are they hiding their hidden trump card? Uh, oh, trump card. Wow, cool. Talk about deficits. Um, uh, cool. <laughs> right. So, um... <laughs> no political means move away um the second infernal drake picked up a rascal jester that puts them at soul point move back <laughs> yeah, sorry no I, I just mine just went places so um we see that at least there are still globals available from the side of sangok we have teleports available from solar lands have the grand star fall as well and obviously there's stuff like the arcane uh, no, yeah the true shot barrage coming through from utility miyashi so 
maybe there's a chance where Rascal Jasper don't reset properly, Cog Hog is stuck on a sideline, or Ninja's stuck on a sideline, and then, well, maybe they get a pick, get a shutdown, start snowballing back into the game. But it's a huge mountain to climb back up. Yeah, and uh, we're looking at App Cog Cog decide about what he's going towards, thought about the Seeker's Arm God, has instead gone towards a stopwatch and a Phoenix Codex, wants that kind of immediate invulnerability. Uh, and that could be a fairly big deal for the next team fight for the side of Rascal Jester. There yes. are three stopwatches available for Rascal Oh my days. <laughs> on, like, on, all, on all their kind of hard diving champions with the, yeah, the show stopwatch. They can buy a lot of time. Exactly. And that, that means that you, we were talking about how Ezreal can potentially get do a fair amount of damage as he's going on into this game. But if he's like trying to queue stopwatch targets, he's not going to get much damage done there. So uh, I think potentially that signals to me that Rascal Jester are looking to get another big team fight win into potentially a Baron if they can use those stopwatches aggressively rather True. than just defensively. And Art is building up, has built up a BF sword as well. Yeah. That does, that is one of the components for um, GA. I think if he goes GA now, um, this game could be just just gone. Yep. There's a stone plate available on Vivid and there'll be four stopwatch items available for the side of Rescue Jester. You can't get the shutdown. They're already so far behind in stats. Sangaku don't have many options. No, they don't. And we're looking at at least Ezreal has got Muramana, Muramana yeah. Transform, has got a QSS, will be free to do as much damage as he can. Uh, there are some items in for the top side as well. Like there's Oblivion All, that's not a bad thing to have. Black Cleaver, Joram's Fist, Infinar. There is something going towards what looks like a Black Cleaver for pa Pantheon. There is a world, perhaps, where they can get onto someone like Art, blow him up, get onto Cog, Cog blow him up. But it's going to be difficult. But on the other side, right, there's, you know, Rascal Jester are absolutely in control of this Massively. game. They can wait until Soul Point. They can wait until Infernal Soul, and then Infernal Soul is one of our better souls, particularly when you're on the offensive. They're, They're not going to wait, though. They're going to start up this Baron. And they have a Blade of the Rune King. They can do two-man this as well. They're really far ahead. A lot of tanky stats on Hatch Matcher. They're spotted out by the True Shop Barrage, and they decide, well, okay, we've been seen. May as well not risk it. I was going to fall back and take a red buff anyway. You know, the minor object, the true objective, the one which actually gives you damage, right? Yeah, that's the one. I mean, actually, Baron Buff gives you damage. It, it gives you, like, a lot of it. Yeah, so, it so gives so you a lot of stats, actually. So, so like, I'm not sure how fair that actually is. <laughs> but the other one has a fire effect on yeah. it. That's important. The fire effect is cool. It is very important. You know what is very important as well? The fact Go that Cog Cog has absolutely put Aphaman through the ring of this game. Yeah, he has. He's, he's dumpstered him. He's absolutely dumpstered him. It's only about 10 CS on the scoreboard, but this guy is like 303. Has a lot. Has his core functionality as a champion completed. So very, very strong on the cannon. And, you know, Aphaman is one of the top laners we look to as our better 1v1 champions. Yeah. Um, players, rather. And Cog Cog is just saying, I mean, reputation aside, I'm just going to kill you. And the other things we've seen Aphaman constantly go for those 1v1s and then lose them has been instrumental in the deficit he's in and like we know that Apple Man is one right of hard to die one. yeah exactly <laughs> is one of our better 1v1 guys right you've been talking about that but like part of the problem with doing that is he is so willing to go for them that when they don't go his way he can sort of fall into a hole pretty swiftly and in this one you know he's zero four zero is desperately trying to farm against this Kenan which can sort of slaughter him where he stands it looks with his item build mm. at the minute Absolutely. Can cock a very strong built up in Melanomicon, the Proto Belt, and obviously the stopwatch alongside Phoenix Codex. So we'll be, you know, um, that'd be probably like 20, 30% CDR. Pro uh, if he picks up a blue buff as well, not the best thing on uh, a cannon, but when you've got to set the mid lane, might as well, right? As we see Rascal Jester going towards the Baron again, once again, spotted out by the eel eyes of Yuturimiyashi. Yeah, and uh, they're being a little judicious because if it all goes wrong, uh, there's still an Infernal Drake but, to come up in under a minute at this but, point. But, but there's no point trying to force a Baron when you can just wait for the soul um, and then and then take that, right? Yeah. Because even if they lose the dragon, if they win the fight, they still probably take a main head, right? Or or at least one of these side lane out uh, inner turrets. Rascal Jester don't care if Sangoku have one Infernal Dragon because you know it it, re it does delay the game somewhat, but delays the game against what a Pantheon and the Leeds. Uh, you know these guys are not uh, these are not late game champions. No. Pantheon does okay in terms of his um, late game now. He's not old Pantheon where he just fall off a cliff. He's he's okay, but he's not a champion which particularly thrives at that point in the game. Whereas Set kind of does when he has the right items and the right team fights. Yeah, and he's at he's at Sterex Gate. He's got a black cleaver. He's, yeah, he's building very towards at this point in the looking time. like a stone blade as well. He's going for that kind of tank build set that for mm. the front line. I kind of appreciate it when they've yep. got enough damage elsewhere anyway. And I went towards the Bloodthirster by the way. It's mm. another defensive item choice. It's not the GA, but it's uh, probably more damage on uh, that item choice. Yeah. 
The Infernal Drake is live and boast of Rascal Jester's solo lane to fit level 16. Slicing Maelstrom at level 16 could be huge. Sengoku Gaming though, waiting on this Blast Cone. They're looking for a steal. They can't afford to give this up. Blank is preparing to trade his life. Can he even get there? No, he's getting knocked up. He's getting shut down. He's got a stopwatch. Stop Can he get the smite? He's going to try and look oh, for it. No, oh, it's picked up by Art. So close though. He's going to flash out. Ooh. Does get out. But that means Infernal Soul is secure yeah. by Rascal Jester, even if it was... A little bit sloppy. This could be the straw which breaks Sengoku's back. They have the permanent buff now which works on minions, it works on monsters, it works on champions. So, Rascal Jester, this is kind of game, this is kind of set point at this point. Set uh, point? Set point. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Maybe they should, uh, that's what they need. They need a tennis set skin. Yes, they I mean, do. It's just, like, like just like holding up a scoreboard or stuff. The, hay, the haymaker is just like just swinging back for the little slug thing. He yeah. walks into Pyrrhon there and just yeah. kind of ignores him. To be yeah, honest. That ninja just walks away. Oh. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, <laughs> oh, nice meet oh, you, buddy. Oh, you're, you're approaching, approaching me. me. <laughs> uh, well, I can't tickle you if I don't <laughs> come any closer. <laughs> Yeah, that's not so much a comet spear as a toothpick. It's like, you know, the grand star for when you see these burning lights coming from the sky and it's at the meteorite ends up on the ground. It's like the size of like a golf ball. That's all that's left. And that's kind of how it's, it's feeling. Like, it's like, oh, you, you got some of that dirt off my back. Thank you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll have to pay you for your services yeah. later. Uh, Ninja is oh, one of the flash flash the massive breaker. Face breaker. It's huge. The damage is real. Spider goes up. Spider comes down. Art slays at least where she stands. Jungler is dead. It's a 5v4. All the ultimate are still available for Rascal Jester. They're going towards <laughs> this Baron. Pyrian is desperately here for a fight, but look where Cog Cog is. He's off to the side. Oh, the oh, chains of do just miss. Maybe you'll tell me how she can get some poke down, but he's got to there, be so no careful. No look, no still at this Kennen. They've turned around onto Braum. There's a flash available. He's not even going to bother. They're just going to pick up the Braum and turn right back to this Baron. Insu Winsu Spider goes into the Death Realm. Blank. Oh, Still another flash! Uh, Yutomi actually has to get out though. Vivid finding another good hook, but Yutomi actually is... buffering it. So it's getting Megano close. is now up. Megano could go up. wrong yet. Yeah, maybe the side of Jester could buy up too much, but the Baron is secured. My Meganar's not there quite in time. It's a 3v5 still blank. Hasn't even got back. And that means 11 to 0 in the kills. It's 10k gold lead. It's Infernal Soul. It's four towers to none. The only thing stopping this being a perfect game is the single, single cloud, cloud drake. drake. And I think one rift herald. Oh, that true, true, true. is it. And it's also not the super... I mean, I guess they gave up some tower plates. Can you really call it? But no, it's a ridiculously dominant game from the Jesters. I came into this game expecting Sengoku to turn up another day at the office, close out a game, and show us that why they're second in the they are getting their asses handed to them right now. 11 to 0 in the kill score. You know, Yutori Miyashi hasn't died, hasn't really made an impact on the game either, though, really. He's found it very hard to find inroads in. And with the Bloodthirster built up from Art alongside um, another BF sword coming in as well, he's going to be putting out so much less damage, even on three items as this Ezreal, compared to um, Art's Varus here. Yeah, it is huge. And, like, it's, it's like he's not been putting all that much damage because every time he tries to step forward to throw a Q, Vivid is flash hooking him. He's got to be aware of this Kennen, this uh, Rek'Sai, this set, who are more than willing to jump on him and make sure he pays. Because the thing is, he is the win condition. We've been over it. If he dies, if he, if he falls to this side, there is no hope for Zengoku Gaming. And that but, hope is fleeting but, 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 and fading the is right now, now. Like, if he has to get in range to, like, start auto-attacking people, he's in range to get just completely one-shot by oh, legitimately yeah, yeah. any member of the other team. He probably vivid kills him at this point. Yes. I mean, Stone Blade Aegis, I'm not sure. Like, he put on his stopwatch as well. Like, he has the he's, got double, he's got double <laughs> stopwatch actives, but effectively he's just yeah. doing a Stone Blade and that in inventory stopwatch. Like, this Nautilus is a nightmare to take down. It is. And the nightmare for Sengoku continues as the mid lane inhibitor turret goes down to the onslaught of the Rascal Jester's bot lane, also pushing in. The only lane which is not currently inside the base is in that top lane, but this is going to be more than enough towers and objectives to the side. We see a Meganar come in from Apperman. He's going to try and get something, yeah. but Cog Cog has Doesn't got matter. the stopwatch. Pyrian's here. He's got a one-man stun, but it's a slicing mail oh, and a stopper. showstopper to try and Oof. stop this game. Yutori Miyashi has been caught. Everybody is dead. The clean ace. It's 16-0 to zero now, and that looks like game 
Rascal Jesters prove the haters wrong. They go to 6 and 7, and Sengoku Gaming are left blinking in the wake of their utter destruction. Sengoku, you have been caught, and for you, the chase is over. This game goes the way of Rascal Jesters, coming out at 6 and 7 after this first game of Week 7. So... Coming over to our pseudo analyst desk, Master Swan. What did you think of that game? Hello, welcome back to the desk. Okay, so we've had back to back perfect games now. If you rewind ourselves back to the end of week six, we saw V3 Esports have a perfect game, and now we've had Rascal Jester. In my eyes, that's a perfect game. Uh I only yeah, care about it's kills it's and deaths. I only it's care that, about the kills that. and deaths. I'm not fussy. I don't like do all this semantic. It, it, it won't make it up onto the, the Leaguepedia's it list of perfect sadly. games. So there is a list of perfect games across all regions, major regions, and um, the expanded. Good enough for me. Teams as well. Good enough for you, of course, but um, unfortunately, Cloud Drake is not quite as useless as it was last season. So it's, uh, maybe last season we could have then kind of gone, okay, it doesn't really doesn't matter. Doesn't break out, yeah. But, there you go. Um, so that, well, that is sadly the way it works these days, just because I think... Uh, the problem is with League becoming so much more objective focused, those mm. objectives do mean a lot more. And also, let's be real, uh, whether or not you want to count that as a perfect game, like it's still it was still brutal, brutal. for Russell yes. Justice. Yeah. And remember most objectives because Infernal Soul they were um Frank, they were sixteen kills to zero by the end of that game. Yeah. Nothing went the way of saying off gaming the early game. Every gank they tried to find went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a dominant display. Every member of Rascal Jesters just looked very comfortable in that game. And uh, I was a little bit surprised when their draft. I do think Sengoku put themselves in a kind of awkward spot with that Pantheon, personally. I would have liked to have seen a maybe more traditional AP mage. I don't know what. Maybe a Syndra. Well, maybe. Well, so, so I think the real twist in this draft is the cannon being locked in. Because sure. you assume that the set was going to go top lane. Ends up being flexed into the mid lane, which is a good match versus the Pantheon. Normally, we see the Pantheon's actually pretty good against all comers in the mid lane. True. Set, not Rex. so much. Um, absolutely wrecks that kind of thing. And then with the Kennen being locked into top lane, and then Cog Cog playing like an absolute beast alongside Hashimaru to shut down Cog Cog. Um, this game very, very quickly fell away from Sengoku. As soon as the vertical jungling came in, you thought weak side now when you're trying to split push, and then you've got like an Ezreal Brawl on the bot side to play around. A little bit questionable. And that cannon actually led the damage race, do dealing over 15,000k worth of damage. The most in-game. That just is such a performance from the side of Rascal Jesters. And it is just one of those things where I kind of liked what Sengoku Gaming were trying to do. They've locked themselves into second place. They want to try a slightly different style, get Pyrian on something super aggressive, super global with their picks. Look True. to try and... Flex out that mid lane and dive things with the Nar split pushing and stuff. I like the idea, especially coming in towards the end of the split. You want to kind of try and um, branch out. We saw it from yeah. Cloud9 last night, if you've, been, if you've been watching the LCS. They were talking about it post-game and stuff, saying like, yeah, we've locked first place. And having broken our win streak anyway, like it was time to try experiment. Pull some stuff out that you maybe weren't so certain about. Try and expand how you play the game. Yeah, I, I hope it is I hope it is actually a learning experience, yes. though. Because this game did not go their no. way. I think there are... Particularly the vertical jungling thing is something I'll have a question mark on. Mm. And just like some of the ways that Pyrrhon was moving around the map was very disrespectful. Moving into Fog of War when you don't know where the Rek'Sai is, um, you don't know where anyone is really. And then kind of the Grand Star Falls not quite being on the same page as everyone, kind of coming into a fight too late and then um, Aftermen already being dead. We talked about it being like, oh wow, I mean, what if you Grand Star Fall with Elise on that side of the map as well? It didn't True. ever really work out for them. No. Did I mean, not. Like the, two t the two times we saw the Grand Star Fall, right, was the one top lane where he turns up thinking they've got the counter gank and they are being counter ganked. It ends up being a 3v2. They both die. Uh, once again, the bot lane where it's the same deal. It's a 3v2 and both but players die. I, I'm kind of hesitant to keep talking about, oh, Sengoku did this wrong and stuff, though, because Rascal Jester's the, the, played really well. They really like, did. I don't want to cast from the perspective of Sengoku being like, oh, second place team, they lost. I want to be like, Rascal Jester took down the second place team crazy right this is a team which in the race like we said for the last couple of playoff spots we were talking about hmm maybe they won't make it win over the a win over a team we expected them not to now with a strong sense um uh, uh strength of schedule that's really good for them massive indeed and i mean let's see how sengoku do going into their second game which is going to be against burning core burning core are uh, on a very deep down tread uh through their history of games uh lost 
I think they're on a 4 0 loss streak, so uh, not looking so good since they were very much in the middle of the pack and now are at the very bottom. We'll find out how they do right after this break.